Okay, welcome to ICT Integration Workshop 2. We're just covering literacy and numeracy. Um, well done to the people that listened to Workshop 0 and 1 on uh, Learning Platform. Um, let's get started. Okay, so things we're going to cover is maths, English, numeracy, literacy, and I'm going to go over Turnitin. Uh, I'll discuss Mathletics. We'll have a go at Gapminder and I'll give you some tips with Word. Okay, so start off with uh, quite a number of years ago we've made a shift in education from question rich answer poor of the industrial uh, age where students would ask their teacher for help asking for questions asking questions and the teacher was the font of all knowledge and they would be the people that would give out the information nowadays in the information age we actually have a student can ask any question they want and they'll get 3.5 million websites giving them answers. So they're answer rich but question poor. And it's the role of the teacher to actually help them to choose good questions that will really delve into the problem and engage the students and help them filter through all the crap you get in your answers. Now, the use of ICT uh, is has made quite a lot of things to change all this. Um, we, we used to talk about the three R's, reading, writing, and, and arithmetic. It's only one R in there, but three R's. And nowadays, uh, we actually start thinking about digital literacy, or your, your ICT skills is almost as fundamental as the other three R's. Um, uh, and this has all come about from uh, Baroness Susan Greenfield, uh, uh, in 2003 was, was making these comments. Um, so we talk about our cyber brain and uh, we actually use our knowledge or we actually use the information we can pull from the internet um, to answer our questions. Students are very good nowadays at assimilating massive amounts of information to answer a question. So they're, very, they're, they're quite good problem solvers. If you give them a real in-depth question, they will go away They'll find so much information that it's ridiculous. They'll use that information that they've assimilated to answer the problem, and then they just dump it. They don't tend to keep hold of that information. Um, so we actually learn quite a lot differently and retain information quite a lot differently. So this is a, a, a change that we need to go through. Now, um, I've talked about special needs here. Uh, ICT can actually be used to help out students with special needs. Someone who's um, studying someone who is dyslexic, some dys people with dyslexia, um, if you change the background of the format that you're looking at, the colour, they actually can find it easy to read. Uh, or you can make the font bigger, or you can actually have the students click on the words and have them read to them. So ICT can help students with special needs. However, uh, and this is a, qu uh, a conversation I quite often have with my sensei, Michael Burgess. He works for IDSC, which is Intellectual Disability Service Council. I think it's still called that. And he's actually pointed out that if a student can't use a computer, they're actually going to be in that special needs case. So we're actually going to be creating a whole new realm of special needs students. So maybe a student has difficulty understanding where the keys are on the keyboard or has trouble reading the screen. Um, and retain that kind of information. So there, we expect there to be a whole spate of new special needs students. So while we're solving one problem, we're going to, going to be creating another. So we have to think about this when we're going through our literacy, numeracy, and, and so on. Now, to start off with, Mathletics is an example of a maths learning platform. Uh, it costs a school $30 per student per year. If a parent wants Mathletics, uh, it's $100 per student. Now, I've just had this discussion with parents many times, and they say, oh, "Why don't I just get a tutor?" Tutors are normally about thirty or forty dollars an hour, so within three hours, you've already got your money back. Mathletics also goes from R to twelve, so the teacher can set the course for the students and track how, track their progressions. So this is very much about modularized learning, um, and we'll discuss that in a different uh, different topic. Um, but I've seen a teacher. Uh, give a year 10 student who was re at about year five level of maths and over the course of the year the student has gone through all the different year levels and by the time they finish the year they're actually working at about a 
bad, a poor year 10 standards. So they've basically caught up about five years in one year. So it's a really good program, very, very useful. Um, there's hundreds of thousands of users across Australia use it and even across the world. So GeoGebra. So you can see here, this is a um, basically an online graphing program where I can actually you know, put in points, I can set up circles, right? And you can use it in class. Um, so it's not platform specific, you can use it on a PC, a Mac. I don't think it will run on an iPad because it appears to be flash based. Um, but you're welcome to give it a go. You, very useful tool. Have a play. The actual website is www.geogebra.org um, and you can download it for free. Um, now, moving on to English. One of my favorite websites is Schmoop. So you can just go schmoop.com. And the it's basically cliff notes for students. So for senior English, really, really useful. Uh, for example, I'm just going to go into Shakespeare here. And it will come up eventually. So here's Shakespeare. All students have to cover Shakespeare when they're at school. I've got a Romeo and Juliet, which is the one that everybody does. Um, you can see here you've actually got the introduction of Shake of Romeo and Juliet, um, what it's all about. You can click on here and it bring take you to these are the themes that are covered. You know, and so on. You can discuss this with the class and click on these and it gives you more information. You can go through the characters. So Really useful tool as a teacher. Also useful if um, for, to let students know. Um, the other one that's really handy is these question section, because this is your higher order thinking questions. So here, you know, it's discussing whether Romeo and Juliet um, is real or just infatuation. So good questions to put in a test. The next one I'm going to cover is turn it in. You may have used this at uni. Okay, so turn it in. Um, now, I've created a class for you all to use. So if you go on and go create account, um, once you've and in here, you're gonna, uh, what I'd like you to do is log on as a student. Now, the class ID is here. So I'm just gonna put that in. So class ID, Four nine three five four three zero, and the password is just Adelaide, capital A, Adelaide. And then, can I get you to put in your details? Uh, it's it's not important. I don't care. It's just so you can track yourself. I'm going to be JJ. When you guys log in, you'll actually be able to sub submit to this here. Okay. Now I've already had a go at doing that. I've loaded up this plagiarism um, thing. The first paragraph I've taken straight from Wikipedia. Second, well, I've taken from some person's blog, and it's given me a fifty percent, fifty-six percent plagiarism, basically. So that's just a very simple match. If I click on this one, it actually will give me everything that matches, right? And not only does it give you other websites, it also will give you um, plagiarism against. So here. This is some student submitted to from Stevens Point. So a student's actually submitted some information here. If you have two students in the class and they're both handing up the same stuff, they can actually you'll, you'll actually pull up and say, no, these are copies of each other. So very useful document. Um, a lot of schools now are getting forcing all their their students to actually work through turn it in um, to submit all their work. All right, so there is your, the details here. Next thing which I want to cover. I'm running out of time is Gapminder. Now, Gapminder is uh, a really impressive uh, web website. It utilizes data from all the countries in the world. Now, here I'm actually looking at income per person versus life expectancy. I'm just going to see if I can zoom in. Hopefully, it's still recording this much. Right, so income per person versus life expectancy. So, in 1800s. Now, I can actually bring. Each country, each or um, area of the world, continent, you can see is a different color. Each country is different. It, the size of the dot is the size of the is the population of the country. Um, yeah, so I can actually look at income per 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 people per person in 1800, and I can actually move it up to 1820 and so on. 
or I can hit play. And so now you can actually see this as a, a work in progress and you can see it all mapping out. So it becomes a real uh, tool that, uh, that tells a story. If I actually go over here, I can pick Australia. I'm just going to stop. 1894, Australia, we had the highest gross domestic product per person in the world. We were the richest people in the world in 1894. If we continue on, you can see Asia is all living longer uh, and starting to get richer. Out here we've got uh, the big ones, uh, United States. As we go up, we're going through the 50s, people living longer, longer. Towards the 80s, we start seeing the blue countries actually dropping um, due to uh, uh, the AIDS epidemic. And towards the end of the 2000s, you see we're all living a lot longer and we're earning a lot more. So a really useful tool. Great to be using for um, um, SOS or any kind of uh, uh, study of, any, of, of things in the world. You can use it for math as well. If I go here to income per peak, change this, I can actually look at any of these different things and compare them. So there is lots and lots and lots of stuff in there. And that the website is gapminder.org. So have a go at that. Uh, the last thing which I want to do is I'm just going to show you a quick tip on Word. When I get my Word back. Okay, so these are tips and tricks of Word. If I actually start, new document, first thing you want to do is, then this is 2008, so it'll be slightly different, but you can see here, I want to click on right tab, go across to the right, click in here somewhere, then drag it all the way to the end. Okay, now, I click underline, and click tab. So if I actually want to make word uh, um, lines on a page when I'm doing a test and then finish it off with two marks, I can do that. If I hit enter, I'll go straight back to the next line. All right, turn off the underline and now I'll say, uh, who is Romeo? Question mark, space. Click underline, tab, 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 tab. Beautiful. Okay, and this is worth three marks. So, very quick way of saving, uh, of, of draw, making up tests and stuff. The other thing which you probably want to do is go down to Tools, Track Changes, I like Changes. If you, a student submits work to you, you may actually go, I'm sorry, hang on, this you need to change. This shouldn't be Romeo. This should be Juliet. Now here, the, we're actually identifying the student has that someone's made the change. If I go up here to final, you can see I've changed it. So I can go back to the original, or I can do final show markup, right, where we changed here. When you send this back to the student, the student can then go, yes, I agree with that. Tick. Okay. So two very quick tips on in Word. Hopefully that should save you quite some time. Okay. So going back to TPAC, we've talked about um, we've talked about Schmoop and GeoGebra, which are techni basically technical and somewhere between technical and content knowledge. We've talked about ways you can actually use your pedagogical knowledge and technical, which is um, and Mathlate and Gapminder can actually be used to demonstrate stuff in class. Um, and it combines the content knowledge of the material you want to cover, the teaching way of, of how you utilize in class, and the ICT of Gapminder. Now, the stuff that we've covered today has been uh, standard one, two, and probably five from National Professional Standards. And I hopefully you this will all make sense. To finish off, what I'd like you to think about is should ICT be considered as important as the three R's? Can you choose one of those? programs we've covered during this course of this podcast and have a go at it, have some playtime and comment on whether or not it's useful, not useful, if there's any other programs that are related to your curriculum area and finally, do you think that the role of the teacher has changed as we move from the industrial age to the information age? See you next